Hello and welcome to our CM integration with MuleSoft video. Today I want to show you our integration with MuleSoft from Salesforce. So my name is Christian Tieck. I am a Salesforce consultant here at Scalefree. First up, a little bit of what we gonna do today. So here are the demo setup steps. In the first step, we will jump into Salesforce. In Salesforce, we will adjust the change data capture, so CDC functionality to listen to account creations or updates. There are other possibilities how you can track those changes either through push topics or channel listeners, but, but push topics is a legacy thing in Salesforce, so we won't touch upon that today, but there will be other videos touching upon the differences between the three and what you should do in your specific use case. For today's use case, we want just to use some accounts that are inserted into a database or updated in a database. For that, in the second step, we will configure MuleSoft. Um, there we will use AnyPoint Studio and create a new project in there, set up Salesforce, and then how to listen to events. In the last step, of course, we will test our project and execute it and see what the output will look like. All right, we will, in the first step, jump into Salesforce right here. So as you will see now, we are here in accounts, so there are no accounts right now created. So we will later create, a one, create one and then want to see the output in any point studio. But as I told you before, we have to do some setup steps here. We will jump right into the setup, then look for change data capture here, CDC under integrations. And as you can see here, there are already selected entities for me. So the account is already selected because we want to listen to the account. If we would want to listen to opportunity changes, we could do that as well. But for today, we will only do the account and then just save this. Okay, but this is all the setup we have to do today in Salesforce. Just keep in mind that if you want to follow along, you will need, of course, your password for your account and your security token. Your security token, you could, if you don't have it right now, reset under settings and then reset my security token and then you will get an email um, where your new security token will be in. Okay, let's see, just go back to our sales platform and back to the opportunities and accounts, of course. And because the setup is all done in Salesforce now, we will just go into AnyPoint Studio and do the rest of the setup there. All right. Here we are now, so on the left of my screen you will see the projects. There are some other projects in here, but we won't touch upon them today. And on the right side is the mule palette. The here is where we drag and drop the modules from. So let's just go right ahead and create a new mule project. So we will name this demo video, and then let's say version 1 today, and then finish. We'll take a second to create, but once it's created, you will see the folder over here and then the flow, the XML flow we will use here. Okay, as I told you before, we will use Salesforce today. So what we will use is the Salesforce channel listener. And as you saw before, you can use um, a lot of different stuff here, but we will only use the channel, subscribe channel listener today to listen to whatever Salesforce puts out in the channel I'm subscribing to. All right. After this is set up, we will jump into the basic settings and the general settings here. First up, the basic settings is just the configuration for the connection. So there are five different types, basic authentication and then some OAuth options. But in today's video, we will only use basic authentication with the username, a password and a security token. But because maybe you want to use not only one of those Salesforce modules, but multiple ones, um, I always suggest to don't put them right in there, but to create a new file. Um, and this will be our config file where all our configurations will go in. Uh, it has to be a YAML file, so config.yaml and finish this. So a new file just opened and here we can put in what is the header. So what is like the system we want to use. We want to use Salesforce and then we need different information. So we need the username. We need the, oh no, let's don't do that. We need the password. 
and we will need the security token. Okay, so I could put those in right now, but I don't want to see any uh, everyone my my password. So I'll just um, keep it like this, and then we will just do it off screen really quick. And after I come back, we can do the next configurations. Okay, this should be all done now, so we can jump right back into it. So I created the YAML file, the config YAML file here. The next step now is to make this a global variable or a global element, because otherwise we can't access any information that is in there. So let's just create this, go for our global configurations, configuration properties, and select a file. You should be able to see your config file here. Um, it should be in your source main resource or, uh, folder, sorry. Okay, after this is created, and now we can jump back into our connection. And here you will always use dollar sign and parentheses and then the name we gave our config, so Salesforce, and then the name our username is under, so dot username. The same we will do for our password, of course. So in here we put in our password. And then in here we will put in our security token. Okay, for the URL, you can leave it as it is if you log in to a sandbox. Then you might want to change this, but if you want to log into a trailer account or your production environment, then you can leave it as it is if you want to use this API version down here. If you don't want to do this, you or you're connecting to a sandbox, for example, Instead of login, you would put in test.salesforce.com and then whatever you want your service SOAP you to be. So yeah, we'll just um, check the configurations here really quick, see if anything pops up. It doesn't, that's good, so we tested successfully. All right. This will now fetch our metadata, so the connection is still in progress. And we can now refresh our streaming channel to see, uh, okay, if there is any channel available. So as we can see, our data account change event, this is the one we created on Salesforce, is here. So we want this, so we want to listen to any account change event that happens in Salesforce. But because I want to see the output in MuleSoft, we have to transform the message we, we get because I don't want the message as it comes from Salesforce. So what I like to do, um, put in a transform message. As you can see, there is something coming in. So the input is the payload. It's an object coming in. Now we have to define the output. The output here is the application Java, but I don't want this in Java. I want this as JSON. JSON. And what do I want in JSON? I want the payload. Just give me the payload. The payload will be stored in a variable called payload again. But to see all of this in action, we have to configure a logger as well. So this will just give us the log that is in here, whatever I put in here. So in our case, the payload. Okay, this is the easy setup to just listen to or just see what Salesforce gives us here. So what we have to do now, we have to fire up this project. This will take a minute or so. It shouldn't take longer than that. After this is done, we can jump into Salesforce, create a new account there, and then see whatever MuleSoft or any point studio in this case gives us in the end. Um, we will have future videos on what would you do with your information. So for example, let's imagine you have a Salesforce environment where all your CRM data is in, but you have another system where you have customer data or whatever. So you would like to synchronize those two. Um, so the next step would be to not use a logger here, but to use, for example, um, a database insert. In one of our other videos, we will use a MySQL database to insert just basic records into, into our database. And then there will be another video on how to access, so how to select things from a database to see if this account is already in there. But for today, we will just focus on how you see your information here. So as we see, it's setting default deployed, so everything should be up and running. We can jump back into Salesforce right now and just create a new account. 
we will create a new account named demo video recording and then let's say version one um, what I like to do, I like always to put in a billing street or billing address because this will be information that is crucial to us in later videos, for example, when you want to bill anything for a customer, of course, you have to send it um, to the right address. So let's say some street here in Hanover because I'm based in Hanover. It's a random street. Um, and then city is Hanover and our billing country, of course, will be Germany. Okay, this is enough input for now. We don't have to put in anything else. Just save this. Count saved. Everything looks good. Okay, so our Salesforce part would be done now. But then we will take another look into AnyPoint Studio. And then in the console down here, as you can see before, we saw default deployed. Now we see two other statements. And the lower statement is from our logger. So as you can see here in the end, our logger message. And here you can see all the data we processed. So we have the payload. So the payload is all the information that was on the account. So that was given to the account. And then there is other information. The record ID is really important. So we would know now which record ID this corresponds to in Salesforce. All right. But this is an easy way how you get your data to MuleSoft or to AnyPoint Studio. And from here on out, you could insert a select statement or insert uh, or an insert statement as you like and then connect it to your database but for now this should be all for today i thank you really much for watching and hope you have a really nice day